Boris Johnson lashes out. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I've explained previously how Boris Johnson is a narcissist, in a very political narcissist. I would encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to watch the videos A Very Political Narcissist, parts one, two, and three, all about why Boris Johnson is a narcissist, but also because he's an aware narcissist. Uh, many of you have asked for more information about the graters. There's plenty of work that I've undertaken in relation to them. You just need to seek it out. And you can learn plenty about the aware narcissist, the greater, through examining how Boris Johnson is determined to be a narcissist in a very political narcissist, parts one, two, and three. You also have a video analysis of him, which is hugely instructive as to seeing the way that he behaves and also seeing the way that the greater smirks, where he knows exactly what he's doing. That can be found, Boris Johnson, The Greater Smirks, Parts 1, 2, and 3. There's also more about the way that he's behaved in terms of Boris Johnson, It's Fine, and Boris Johnson, Bye Bye. All instructive with regard to the way that this man behaves and provides you, students of my work and narcissism, with a clear behaviour of a narcissist in a position of parliamentary power and privilege as the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and an aware narcissist. He's in the news again, just the way that he likes it. The Times reports on the fact that Boris Johnson stood down as an MP and launched a blistering attack on Rishi Sunak's government after an investigation found that he misled Parliament over the Downing Street Party scandal. Partygate, as it's known, has loomed once again and has threatened Boris Johnson's sense of control. He responds to that by resigning, assertion of control by withdrawal, essentially jumping before he's pushed, as there were suggestions that he could be suspended. He then, of course, having asserted control over that by withdrawing, goes on the attack by lashing out at the current government. The former Prime Minister accused the Privileges Committee of egregious bias, smearing, after it recommended that he should be suspended for more than 10 days, which would be enough to trigger a by-election. Johnson decided instead to resign as a Tory MP for Uxbridge and South Ryslip with immediate effect, accusing the committee of mounting a witch hunt and describing it as a kangaroo court, assertion of control by withdrawal and then indirect assertion of control through smearing. He said that the cross-party group of seven MPs, the majority of whom are Conservative, was determined to use the proceedings against me to drive me out of Parliament. Paranoia which he said set an unsettling and undemocratic precedent. Provocation. In the statement, Johnson also issued a vitriolic attack on Sunak as he accused him of abandoning the pledges on which he had won the 2019 election, which of course is rather entertaining and shows the hypocrisy of Boris Johnson once again as he would regularly say one thing and do another. Here he's being provocative towards the Prime Minister and smearing him. He called for cuts to business and personal taxes and for the party to make the most of Brexit, adding, we must not be afraid to be a properly conservative government. Bear in mind, of course, that he is triangulating people with Brexit. You may or may not be aware that actually Johnson had no view when it came to Brexit. Indeed, he wrote papers one in favour of remaining and another in relation to leave, and he chose leave. Why? Because he saw it as the means by which he could get political power. Not that he believed in it, but because he saw it as a means for getting what he wanted and required. And therefore, it is interesting to see that as an example of the fluidity that he demonstrates by way of this political expediency. That is in part why he was able to become Mayor of London and Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. He accused Sunak, in effect, of betraying his legacy, 
claiming that he had passively abandoned a free trade deal with the United States and junked policies, including support for first-time home buyers, a bonfire of EU laws, and new legislation to protect animals. All of this, of course, is deflection. Talking about the failings of somebody else, what about ism, rather than his own behaviours. Typical behaviour of a narcissist. Our party needs urgently to recapture its sense of momentum and its belief in what this country can do, he said. We need to show how we are making the most of Brexit, triangulation, and we need in the next months to be setting out a pro-growth and pro-investment agenda. We need to cut business and personal taxes, and not just as pre-election gimmicks, rather than endlessly putting them up. We need to deliver on the 2019 manifesto, which was endorsed by 14 million people. We should remember that more than 17 million voted for Brexit, bringing up the past. Red Wall MPs rallied behind Johnson. Brendan Clark Smith, the Tory MP for Bassett Law, said the former Prime Minister's resignation was the end result of a parliamentary witch hunt which could put a banana republic to shame. Such an observation provides Johnson with the indirect control that he requires. Mark Jenkinson, the Workington MP, said that Johnson was a political giant, flattery, who would go down in the history books as one of the greatest political leaders in my lifetime. All lovely, positive fuel for Bojo. Johnson's departure will trigger a by-election in his Uxbridge seat, which he held with a 7,000 majority at the last election and was already high on Labour's target list. The Tories will also have to defend Nadine Dorries' mid-Bedfordshire seat after she also resigned earlier in the day, having not been given a peerage on Johnson's Prime Ministerial Resignation Honours list. On Friday night, the Welsh audience of a live recording of a BBC Radio 4 programme erupted in applause as Johnson's resignation was announced challenge fuel. As Alex Forsyth, the host of Any Questions, broke the news in Pembrokeshire, David T.C. Davies, a Conservative minister and panellist, drew groans as he sarcastically thanked those present for the usual impartiality we expect on Radio 4. Johnson indicated that he was planning to return to politics, promised gain, and said that he had left Parliament only for now at least. The Conservative Party is expected to block him from standing in Doris' seat because it wants a local candidate. A snap poll from YouGov found that a majority of Britons thought that Johnson was right to resign and that he was dishonest about the Partygate scandal. Of 4,929 adults polled, 62% said he was right to resign. Almost half, 49%, said he knowingly misled Parliament, and 59% thought he committed further COVID-19 offences. Hitting back at Johnson on Friday evening, the Privileges Committee issued a statement warning that the former Prime Minister's attacks had impugned the integrity of the Committee and the Commons. Again, of course, that's entirely Johnson's intention, lashing out at those that have caused a problem for him because he has no sense of remorse, no sense of guilt. It's all about him. He must lash out in order to assert control. Johnson stated in a statement, I have received a letter from the Privileges Committee making it clear, much to my amazement, that they are determined to use the proceedings against me to drive me out of Parliament. Victim mentality. Even greaters have it, although it's not displayed in the same way that a mid-ranger or a lesser would. They have still not produced a shred of evidence, denial, that I knowingly or recklessly misled the Commons. They know perfectly well that when I spoke in the Commons, I was saying what I believe sincerely to be true, and what I have been briefed to say, like any other minister. Blame shifting. It was what I was briefed to say. They know that I corrected the record as soon as possible, and they know that I and every other senior official and minister, including the current Prime Minister and then occupant of the same building, Rishi Sunak, believed that, that we were working lawfully together. I have been an MP since 2001. I take my responsibilities seriously. Although, of course, whilst he was writing that, he'd have been chortling to himself. I did not lie. Another lie. And I believe that in their hearts the committee know it. But they have willfully chosen to ignore the truth, because from the outset their purpose has not been to discover the truth or genuinely to understand what was in my mind when I spoke in the Commons. Provocation. Their purpose from the beginning has been to find me guilty. Regardless of the facts, this is the very definition of a kangaroo court, smearing provocation. 
Most members of the committee, especially the chair, had already expressed deeply prejudicial remarks about my guilt before they had even seen the evidence. They should have recused themselves. Blame shifting. In retrospect, it was naive and trusting of me to think that these proceedings could be remoteful, useful, or fair, but I was determined to believe in the system, and in justice, and to vindicate what I knew to be the truth. It was the same faith in the impartiality of our systems that led me to commission Sue Gray. It is clear that my faith has been misplaced. Again, he's the one that's been let down. He hasn't let anybody else down. Of course, it suits the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats and the SNP to do whatever they can to remove me from Parliament, i.e. you're all scared of me because I am brilliant and dangerous. Sadly, as we saw in July last year, there are currently some Tory MPs who share that view. Paranoia. I am not alone in thinking that there is a witch hunt underway. Paranoia. Blame shifting. To take revenge for Brexit and ultimately to reverse the 2016 referendum result. Remember, although some of these allegations may well be true, they're fueled by the paranoia that he has. Again, even a greater has paranoia, but it's just not as rampant as that of a lesser or mid-range narcissist. My removal is the necessary first step. Notice, of course, of his grandiosity, that he links a referendum result and its reversal to removing him. He is the result. He is Brexit. And I believe there has been a concerted attempt to bring it about. I'm afraid I no longer believe that it is any coincidence that Sue Gray, who investigated gatherings in Number 10, is now the Chief of Staff Designate of the Labour leader. Nor do I believe that it is any coincidence that her supposedly impartial Chief Counsel, Daniel Stillitz KC, turned out to be a strong Labour supporter, who repeatedly tweeted personal attacks on me and the government. Provocation. Smearing. When I left office last year, the government was only a handful of points behind in the polls. That gap has now massively widened. Notice he's suggesting that it's other people that are causing this failure, not him. Just a few years after winning the biggest majority in almost half a century, triangulation bringing up the past, that majority is now clearly at risk. Our party needs urgently to recapture its sense of momentum and its belief in what this country can do. We need to show how we are making the most of Brexit, and we need in the next months to be setting out a pro-growth and pro-investment agenda, deflection. We need to cut business and personal taxes, and not just as pre-election gimmicks, rather than endlessly putting them up. We must not be afraid to be a properly conservative government. Why have we passively abandoned the prospect of a free trade deal with the United States? Why have we junked measures to help people into housing, or to scrap EU directives, or to promote animal welfare? We need to deliver on the 2019 Manifesto, which was endorsed by 14 million people. We should remember that more than 17 million voted for Brexit. Triangulation. I am now being forced out of Parliament by a tiny handful of people, with no evidence to back up their assertions, and without the approval even of Conservative Party members, let alone the wider electorate. I believe that a dangerous and unsettling precedent is being set. The Conservative Party has the time to recover its mojo and its ambition and to win the next election. I had looked forward to providing enthusiastic support as a backbench MP. Future faking, promised gain. Harriet Harman's committee has set out to make that objective completely untenable. The committee's report is riddled with inaccuracies and reeks of prejudice, smearing, but under their absurd and unjust process, I have no formal ability to challenge anything they say. The Privileges Committee is there to protect the privileges of Parliament. That is a very important job. They should not be using their powers, which have only been very used, recently designed, to mount what is plainly a political hit job on someone they oppose. It is in no one's interest, however, that the process the committee has launched should continue for a single day further. Accordingly, he knows what he's done, and he's getting out, whilst, of course attacking and provoking and smearing those that he sees have had it in for him. It is in no one's interest, however, that the process the committee has launched should continue for a single day further. So I have today written to my association in Uxbridge and South Ryslip to say that I am stepping down forthwith and triggering an immediate by-election. I am very sorry, he's not, to leave my wonderful constituency. He's sorry that he's had to be removed in this way. It has been a huge honour to serve them both as mayor and MP. But I am proud that after what is cumulatively a 15-year stint, 
I have helped to deliver, among other things, a vast new railway in the Elizabeth Line and full funding for a wonderful new state-of-the-art hospital for Hillingdon, where enabling works have already begun. Grandiosity triumphing his successes. Of course, he doesn't make mention of any failures, of which there are many associated with him. I also remain hugely proud of all what we have achieved in my time in office as Prime Minister, bringing up the past, getting Brexit done, bringing up the past, winning the biggest majority for 40 years, bringing up the past, and delivering the fastest vaccine rollout of any major European country, bringing up the past, as well as leading global support for Ukraine, global support. It is very sad to be leaving Parliament, at least for now, but above all, I am bewildered and appalled that I can be forced out anti-democratically by a committee chaired and managed by Harriet Harman with such egregious bias. Accordingly, Boris Johnson faces threat to control with regard to being suspended and decides to get in there first. It's almost petulant. Nevertheless, it is all about denying the threat to control that was posed. Furthermore, his statement deflects from his own behaviour and talks about what he's achieved and also, of course, attacks other people. Typical of the greater lashing out, not in a random way, but with the purposes of bolstering his own position whilst denigrating other individuals. Be assured that what he wrote or stated by way of that statement was not a pity play. Greaters don't do that. Instead, when he talks about what has happened to him, he isn't saying it in a way as, nah, blah, this isn't fair, but simply saying, this is what has happened. I'm making a note of it for the record. And then open brackets, be assured, I will not forget about the way that these people have treated me, and I will get them back. Of course, he doesn't say as such, because a greater will not issue a threat in such way, why alert your enemy to what you might do? Instead, his mind will be plotting and planning what his next move will do. It will remain long in the memory, those that he perceives as having done him an injustice. But when he talks about their behaviour, he doesn't do it by way of a pity play, but as simply marking that behaviour, noting it, telling the world about how these people have behaved to justify what will eventually come later. An excellent example of how the greater behaves when facing a particular threat to control, and it's certainly far from finished. <laughs>